Hey, this is Drew Baird from Moon Audio, and I'm real excited today to talk about some new products from Matrix Audio. Back in the spring, I ventured over to the Can Jam Singapore show. Jude Mansilla was gracious enough to give me a heads up on a couple of new really exciting products. He did a bunch of measurements and was amazed at the low noise floor that their products was providing. So I went to the show, gave all their products a listen, and so the primary product that I'm most interested about is this piece right here. This is the Element X headphone amp, preamp, DAC, Wi-Fi, network connection. I mean, just a do-it-all, everything piece of equipment. The most important part of it to me, because I'm really into headphones, is the balanced headphone amp and the DAC architecture. Uh, they're using the ES9038 Pro Saber chip, and this is one of the most popular and exciting new DAC chips that are around right now. And the way that they've implemented it is that they're using a very low noise regulator ES9311 chip in unison with it, which is why I think Jude was getting such low noise floor measurements. Everything about this is quiet, quiet, quiet. They've overbuilt the chassis. They've done so much with the architecture of the design of the circuits to really make it quiet. Um, they're also using a Crystec CC HD 950 Fento clock. This has helped doing all the reclocking and the processing of the incoming digital signals to make sure that the DAC gets the cleanest possible digital transfer from your sources. Like I said, there's lots of inputs on this device. So you've got a USB input. This will get us all the way up to 512 native DSD. It'll get us 384 PCM resolution. If you switch to an I2 squared input via an HDMI connection, very similar to what PS Audio is doing, you can actually get it up to 1024. That being said, there aren't any I2 squared devices that I know of right now that will output that resolution, but they're forward thinking. My guess is it's very possible that they'll be adding maybe a server that has an I2S squared output that'll provide that resolution. Now Matrix also came out with a do it all connection device to do some conversions for you, um, not just for their devices, but for other devices on the market. This is the SPDIF X and it's got a USB input an I2S squared output, an optical output, SPDIF coax RCA output, and AES. Now this won't get you that 1024 DSD resolution. It'll get up to 512, and really this was designed not so much to use with the Element X, but with some of their lesser priced products, but also let's say you've got an existing product that you need to do a bunch of different conversions because you don't have a good USB connection or you have an I2S squared and no way to get I2S squared into your DAC and your DAC does better with I2S squared. So this little box will help you out. Now it is unpowered, however you can add on a linear power supply which they provided a DC jack. This unit doesn't come with a linear power supply but they're talking about creating some linear power supplies for some of their products. Which leads me into the next piece that they've come up with which is a USB audio card for your computer for getting the best signal possible to your Element X. This is a heavily shielded, it's got a heavy casing around it to ward off all the, the noise and interference that goes on inside of your computer. Computers are very noisy animals. And they've done a lot to do noise floor reduction from the power supply in the computer. They've also put a switch on here so that you can use an external linear power supply and negate the power supply in the computer. Once again, Matrix is working on some linear power supplies to go with these accessories. But back to the Element X. We already know it's got the USB and the I2 squared input, but not only can it do USB audio from your computer, but you can also connect a hard drive to it. In fact, you can connect two hard drives because there are two USB inputs on the back of it. Now, be careful with hard drives. If the hard drive is a very large, high terabyte capacity portable drive, you may run into power situations, as this wasn't designed to power every possible hard drive configuration out there. Smaller drives, and I've tested my four terabyte passbook by Western Digital on it, and I've got no issues, but I'm assuming there are drives out there that just really need an external power supply. So in those situations, make sure you're using an external power supply hard drive if you see some problems happening with getting audio data transfer onto your Element X to listen to. Not only does it have the USB input for hard drives, but it's also got two different network connections. It's got Wi-Fi, it's also got Cat5. It is not Rune certified, but I've tested it with Rune and it works fine in both Wi-Fi and network connection base. It's also got two coax inputs, two TOSLink inputs, and I won't get into every little difference in the resolution inputs that it'll allow, 
Make sure to check out the Matrix Audio website for more detail on those. It's also got XLR and RCA analog output, so you can use it as a preamp. Getting to the preamp function, let's talk about the volume control. They've done a hybrid design on the Element X that it's both a combination of a digital volume control and an analog volume control. You will notice as you turn the volume control, and, and I can't remember how many steps it is, as you go up and we'll say 10 steps, you'll hear a clicking. That's the relay switching over to increase the gain on, like I said, a combination analog and digital volume control. Very nice sounding. The Element X also has two little brothers. There's the Element P and the Element M. Now the M version is a scaled down version where we have a single ended instead of a balanced headphone amp in here. They've also changed from the ES9038 Pro Saver DAC to the ES9028 Pro. Still a great DAC chip, but because they don't have the balanced architecture, the 38 really wasn't required. That's why they went with this chip. They're not using the same Christec Femto clock in that unit. They've switched to a low noise clock for taking care of uh, your incoming digital signals. The Element P is, instead of a headphone amp section, they removed the single-ended headphone section, and they put in an amplifier for speakers. So you've got three great models, all with different possibilities, depending on your situation, whether you're a headphone guy or an amplifier guy. Now let's take a look at the back of the unit. So here we are at the back of the unit. As you can see here first, there's both balanced and RCA analog output so that you can use this as a preamp, go into speaker amp and use it with speakers as a full-fledged preamp. There are no analog inputs on this device. They're all digital. So you won't be able to connect uh, any analog based products to it. When it comes to digital, we're chock full of all kinds of connections. So we've got two coax digital inputs, two optical, here are the antenna for doing a Wi-Fi connection. You can also use your iPhone with AirPlay with this. You can do UPnP apps from your Android device to send music from your phone here or your tablet. It's very flexible. Uh, Matrix has their own Android app. They're working on an iOS app so that you can send uh, music and your streaming services from your uh, Apple iOS to the Matrix M. We then have our I2 squared HDMI input at the bottom there. Next to that, we've got USB input. Now this is the USB input for your computer. This is using a XU216 XMOS processor. This processor allows you to do MQA unfolding. So there are two unfolding stages when it comes to MQA. Your software, such as Tidal, will do the first unfolding to get you to 2496, and then any other resolution above that, you've gotta have hardware unfolding. So the Matrix products all come with MQA unfolding to get you 24192 and potentially higher, depending on what title or other streaming services come out with. The unit's firmware upgradable so that they can make improvements as new and exciting formats come to market, as well as improve the internal workings of the unit for changing dithering curves. You'll notice when you go through the controls on the front, you can pick different digital curves for doing a sharper slope or a smoother slope to make your music sound a little more uh, musical or a little more uh, analytical and so forth. Lots of options on the front to play with. So that's what the USB-B connection is used for. You'll see that there are two USB-As. This is what I was talking about earlier with being able to connect hard drives to the device. Um, then moving over, we've got the Cat5 network connection for not only doing uh, UPnP, but also, as I said, not certified by Rune yet. And I'm not sure what their plans are as far as getting certification, but it does work with Rune. I've tested it. On the input selection, the Cat5 has a hierarchy than all the other inputs. So if nothing is playing on other inputs, and you turn on your rune, it'll automatically sense that and play that at default. You can also turn off the USB input uh, on the selector switch for choosing your inputs to totally turn it off. To further reduce noise floor, the less digital components that are running in the processing will make other digital inputs quieter. So if you're not using it, you can turn it off and that way the Cat5 or the Coax or Toslink and I2S squared have that totally taken out of the scenario to improve sonic qualities on, on the other digital inputs. Uh, this unit is both AC capable of 220 and 115. If your unit comes and it turns on fine and everything seems to be working, but you're not getting sound, make sure that you, if you're in the U.S. Uh, to check the, the setting because it may be set for 220 since these are shipped from Asia. 
Like I said, uh, on the inputs electric switch, there's all kinds of different things you can play with. You can change the uh, response curves, like I said, dithering for shaping the digital signals that are incoming, volume control, input selection, turning USB on and off, some other things to deal with uh, DSD frequency rates, uh, it's chock full of a lot of different options. Um, I definitely recommend taking a look at our webpage. We've got the entire manual there so you can skim through it and see all the uh, possibilities that you can do with this unit. Uh, real excited about this, love the sound. I think it's gonna be one of the hottest uh, uh, components this year. We'll hope to do some more videos on the other two pieces, the uh, Element M and the Element P, but this is the king of the hill in terms of their products. I hope I've informed you a little bit about it and enjoy.